we're going to be looking at rad dads. I wasn't actually even supposed to be preaching today. I had to put something together really quick, so uh, uh, forgive me if uh, it's not as polished as I normally am. I thought um, I would show you some pictures of the three young men that made me a dad. So take a look. Let's see if you can guess which, which son is Luke. Can you guess which on the board, which one is Luke? Look for the, the naughty little grimace. You can see which one, which one? That's, yeah. I was so tired, I had my glasses on, so you wouldn't even see how tired I am. And obviously, you can figure out which one is my Ethan, right? Ethan is in the middle with the big, the big grin. And that little chunk denied me enough sleep. I thought I would die. Gabriel on the end. So, but I also thought it'd be a good thing to wish my own dad a happy Father's Day. Um, the, you won't recognize him, but the little munchkin that my dad and my mom are holding right there is Gabriel, their first grandson. So, happy Father's Day to all of you who are dads. You know the challenge, the joy. Okay, kids, I want your eyes again. Kids, kids, pay attention. Look up here, look up here. So, if you want to know, if you want to know what it's like to be a dad, I gave my pen, my, my pen to my son, and he said, Dad, close your eyes. And I thought, oh, here we go. Right? We're getting ready for Father's Day. Close your eyes. He said, I want to write something. So he takes my arm. So I close my eyes. And, and you know what that precious, beautiful angel of a son writes on my arm? Poop and pee. That's what it's like to be a dad, is to get, to get messy. That's what it's like to be a dad. So um, we've got a couple places where we're going to read scripture. So Kids, go ahead and stand on your feet. Kids, all the kids, on your feet. We're going to read scripture together. Kids, stand up on your feet. On your feet. I'm waiting. Come on, Sophie, on your feet. We're going to read. Right out of Romans chapter 8. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. The very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer for him so that we may also be glorified with him. This is God's word. All right, grab your seats. Grab your seats. Okay. Last thing I want to do. Kids, I want to see, take both of your hands. Kids, take both of your hands. I want to see if you can line up each of your fingers like this. I want you to line up your fingers just like that. I want to see, can you focus and keep the jellyfish because you know how quiet jellyfish are? You'll never hear them. So keep your fingers just like that. Now, this scripture here in Romans chapter 8 reminds us that we... Oh, I broke my jellyfish. Keep yours going. That we have the amazing privilege to call God the Father, Daddy. If we go back, that word there, Abba, Father, isn't a, a formal salutation. It's not a formal greeting. Abba, Father, keep the jellyfish. Abba, Father means daddy we get to have such closeness with god that we get to call him daddy and whether you had this amazing relationship with your dad like i had with my dad i tell you i i love my dad and i had such a great experience growing up with him or whether you had no experience with your dad at all you still get to have the privilege of calling god the father who created everything that exists daddy if you've said yes to him and if you haven't said yes to him Today's your day to say yes to Jesus. So as I was reading and getting ready these last two days uh, for the sermon today, I, uh, I found an old article. This is from 2017. And there was a bunch, there was a group of millennials, young, young men, who wanted to put on a backyard barbecue. But they had two problems. One, none of them actually knew how to barbecue. And two, yeah, what, so you're like, what? How do they not know how to barbecue? And two, between all of them, none of them had a dad they could call on to, to help them with this barbecue. And so they, what, what did millennials do? They put in a, an ad for, for a generic dad figure to help us run a barbecue. And they got 100 responses of men saying, I'll do it. And so they went through their criteria and they selected three random dads and they, they, they needed the name to be super simple to say. And they wanted someone that could share with them about barbecues, about building a deck and about, about car stuff. So, uh, the story ends really well. It was so, so neat that they got three generic dads for their barbecue. But it got me to thinking, how is it that this whole group of young men didn't have one dad that they could call on? And I thought, let me look at that as far as the United States and as far as where we are as a country. 
uh, the Census Bureau in 2022 ran a census as to how many homes don't have a dad, where dad is not present, dad is not in the home, and it's 18.5 million kids will grow up without a dad. And as I thought about that, and as I was reading the, the article, that means the United States leads the entire world in dad absence, in dadlessness. And if that doesn't break your heart, I tell you that just ripped my heart out of my chest, that 18.5 million kids will grow up without someone that they call on as dad. And so I thought it'd be a really good idea for us to take just a minute, not to dab, but to pray for the United States and to pray for dads to step up and for godly men to step into the gap because there are so many young ones that desperately need that godly touch of dad. Let's take a minute and let's pray for the dads of the United States. And so, Lord Jesus, we ask uh, for these young ones, these 18 million who are growing up without dad in the home. Lord Jesus, we pray that they will come to know you as father. But we also pray, Jesus, that you will surround these young ones with godly men who will love them and protect them and uh, teach them how to sharpen a knife and go camping with them and, and steer them in your ways, Lord Jesus. We pray for, for dads uh, to, to come back into the picture. We pray for reunification. We pray especially for granddads to be stepping into the gap and to, to love and to fill these young minds and hearts with, with godly adventure. God, we are so grateful that you are dad to all, and that you want that close, intimate relationship with us. But we pray for these young ones who desperately need your hand. And we ask Jesus that you will do it. Amen. And so, uh, as I was putting together a message, I just scribbled a few things down, and I want to think, if, if I had just five or ten minutes to talk to dads and to encourage future dads, what would I say? And the first thing I would say, anyone who either is a dad or is going to be dad, love and serve your family. Uh, I have this incredible privilege being a pastor and getting to do what I love to do. I'm doing premarital counseling with a couple. And as I was uh, walking them through the different expressions of love, dads, I want to encourage you to love your kids with your words. Be finding ways uh, to, to build them up with your words, both publicly and privately, almost to the point of embarrassing them that you love them with your words so much. I love you three. I want to encourage you to set a good example with your actions and to love them with your actions. I want to encourage you dads, and those of you that are surrogate dads, that step into the gap where, where there isn't a dad that is active. I want you to, to show the positive actions of love. And in the right way with your kids, show them affection. Uh, I love, one of the, the greatest privileges of my life is getting to show these young men what it means to be a godly man by kissing them on the head and wrestling them down uh, uh, for nighttime prayers and, and showing them affection of the Father. And dads, invest time in your sons and your daughters. I was trying to think about a fancy acronym, like, uh, what? W-A-A-T. The acronym didn't come together very nicely, but if you want to know what, W-A-A-T, to do, words, actions, affection, and time, each of these things are important. And if you're thinking about, this is probably the greatest investment you will ever make in your life, not your 401k, not your job, you're investing in someone that will live forever. You have a short gap of time where you get to be a primary influence in your kid's life. Don't miss that time. Cherish it. Guard it. Because the world would love to steal that time from you. Guard it. The second thing I'd like to say to you dads and future dads, lead your family. Don't wait for someone else to lead your family. Don't let the government lead your family. Provide for and love your family. Protect them. The third thing I'll say as you lead your family is pray for them. And not just quietly to yourself. Take moments to sit them down and to pray for them one-on-one. -on -one. Grab their hands and pray for them. Sometimes uh, they, don't even, they don't even know this. <laughs> to embarrass my kids. But when they will have gone, gone to sleep and I didn't get a chance to pray with them, even as they're asleep, I'll lay hands on them in their sleep and pray God's richest blessings over them. Take every moment that you can to pray for your kids. The third thing, and this is the one that's very difficult, 
This is the one that most people don't want to touch this. Like, well, don't talk about this. But to say, be careful in godly discipline of your family. And so engaging in discipline is, again, something that so many people disagree on. It's such a hard topic to handle. Uh, as I was praying and waiting upon the Lord today, I thought, think about the same way as God disciplines you. Think about how does God discipline you in your life? And don't assume that you know it. Take some time today, this week, and take some time, dads, with the Lord this week and say, how is it you have disciplined me? And let us, as dads, use that exact same method and discipline our kids. The world has got such a warped picture of discipline to even use the word sounds like abuse to the world. And yet, I want to take you uh, to the scriptures because that is our, uh, our resting authority. Hebrews chapter 12 says this to us. It says, endure trials for the sake of discipline. God is treating you as children. For what child is there whom a parent does not discipline? If you do not have that discipline in which all children share, then you are illegitimate, illegitimate and not his children. Moreover, we had human parents to discipline us and we respected them. Should we not even more be willing to be subject to the father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. Discipline isn't, isn't a fun thing, and yet it is a necessary thing in our life. Daddy. Imagine if everything your kids ever said, you just said yes. Imagine if every request they ever made, you just said yes. Think about that for a second. And uh, kids, I want you to imagine. Kids, use your imagination. With all, of my, all of my kids in the audience, all of my kids, close your eyes really quickly. Close your eyes. Close them. Kids, close your eyes. Close them. I want you to imagine that your parents said yes to everything you asked. Every time you asked something, I want you to imagine that your parents said yes. And now I want you to think, how many things have you asked your parents for that you're glad they didn't give you? Oh, how many times have you asked your parents for something that wasn't actually good for you? Think about it. Think about it. Don't open your eyes yet. Keep them closed. Some of you are peeking. No peeking. Think about all those requests that you made that later you realized, ooh, I, I totally asked for a discipline for my brother and it was not fair to do that. Okay, open your eyes. It is our God-given responsibility to discipline our kids as best as we see fit between us and the Lord. It is such a critical piece that is missing in modern society. And yet God would say, love them and discipline them both. Both is what creates a healthy, balanced child. And so don't lean away from discipline. Lean into the Father's discipline and how he disciplines us. And if you don't know what that looks like, I'm not going to give you a perfect prescription. Because I'll tell you, I have three sons, and any of you that, any of your visitors is going to go way over your head, but any of you that are regulars, you know, my sons are very, very different from one another. Discipline that worked great for my oldest doesn't work at all for my youngest, like not even a little bit. And discipline that works great for my youngest doesn't work for my middle child. There is not a one-size-fits-all here. And yet, I want to encourage you to come back to the scriptures, and the scriptures encourage us and they say to you and to I, if you are not disciplined by God, you are not his child. Think about that for a second. I'm going to repeat it. If you are not disciplined by God, you are not his child. Now, discipline always seems painful rather than pleasant at the time, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. There is an end goal with discipline, and it isn't discipline for discipline's sake. The peaceful fruit of righteousness. When we are under the discipline of the Lord, under the hand of the Lord, and there's been many times in my life when he has disciplined me. He brings peace and the fruit of righteousness that lasts forever. And it is wonderful to be disciplined by the Lord, even though at the time it is so difficult. I remember when I was a young man and one of the, my first times of thinking about the discipline of the Lord, there was a time when the Lord was completely silent with me. 
Now you might think, but that doesn't sound like discipline at all. Have you ever been so upset with someone that you were silent with them? Come on, let's be honest. You ever been so mad at someone that you're just zip? There was a time when the Lord's discipline in my life looked like complete silence. And in that time of silence, I learned such an amazing, incredible, valuable lesson to say, I'm going to continue to strive to hear him and to be close to him and to love him and to read his word all the more, not less, all the more, even in the midst of not hearing his voice. Don't shy away from discipline. When we feel the discipline of the Lord, when we feel, uh, man, God is really correcting my life. He's really uh, taking things out. Thank him for what he's doing because he sees the long picture. If we think about parenting and, and being a dad or being a good dad, I want you to think of it a little bit like a garden. I know that there are some of you in the audience who are amazing gardeners, way better than I am, and you think there's several things that you have to have in order to, to have a good garden. And one of them is the discipline to remove the weeds. If you don't remove the weeds from your garden, I promise you, all you're going to grow is weeds. I don't know how it is that I turn around and my garden always has weeds growing. And we need to let the Father pull the weeds out of our life and let him prune and, and pull back to be giving us the good soil and the water of the Spirit and the richness of the Word of God in our life. Those are the things that make for a wonderful walk with God and those are the very same elements that make for being a good dad. If I love my sons, I will be careful to discipline them and to train them up in the ways of the Lord so that when they're older, they will hold on to him with all of their might and they'll be men that I am proud of. I'm already so proud of my three young men, hooligans that they are. And yet, in each of their lives, I see some things that we need to carefully and lovingly Correct. And so I want to ask you really quickly, and this is an important for every, a question for everybody, including the kids. Are you a legitimate kingdom kid? Have you said yes by faith to Jesus? Have you welcomed him into your heart and made him Lord of your life? Have you said yes to him in all ways? If you have not said yes to him, today is your day to say yes to God the Father. Today is your day to be adopted. Have you ever watched those movies where uh, they're in an adoption agency and the kids are just, you know, is today going to be the day I'm adopted? Is today the day I'm going to be adopted? And kids are just yearning for the day when they get adopted into a family. Have you ever seen those movies? I'm thinking of a cartoon, actually, where uh, the kid just, no one wants to adopt this poor kid. God wants to adopt each of you into his family. But he wants you to say yes. The only, only thing you have to do is by faith say yes to him. Let's take a moment and let's pray. And if you want to uh, pray this prayer right after me, it's so easy to say yes to him. And for some of us, it's saying yes again to him. We've walked our own way for a time and we need to, to turn things back to his path. Let's take a moment and let's pray. So kids, uh, go ahead and fold your hands. We're going to pray. Close your eyes. And you can pray something as simple as, Lord Jesus, I want to be a part of your family. I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for wiping away all of my wrongdoing. Thank you, Jesus, so much for your love for me. Thank you for making me a part of your family. I just can't wait to spend all of eternity with you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we invite the, ba the band back up onto the stage, those of you who are adults and have been walking with the Lord faithfully for a long time, I want to encourage you. As I was looking through pictures of dads. This one just jumped out to me, and I hope it means something to you like it means to me. There was a time when one of my sons would only fall asleep if he was next to me, so under my arm, and could feel me breathing. But you know what that means is if he's under my arm right here next to me, it means I can't sleep while he is sleeping. But I want to encourage you, if you feel far from the Father today, who's created that distance? 
Think about it for a second. If you feel far from the Father today, man, He just cannot wait to draw you in close to His heart because you are close to His heart and because His love and His plans for you are perfect. And I'd like all of my kids come forward. I've got, I've got a task for you kids. Come forward right here in the front, right in the front. Wait right here. Wait right here for me. Come on up, come on up. Eric, Eric, come on. It will not, it will not be embarrassing. Trust me, don't worry. There will there'll be zero embarrassment here. So um, I want you to go ahead and grab four or five of the, the bags. These are the presents for dad. So if you are 20 or up and, uh, and a man, stand on your feet. So even if you don't have kids, stand on your feet. Come on, dads, or soon-to-be dads, or future dads. Stand up on your feet, all men. As long as you're not a teenager, stand up on your feet. Kids, go ahead and get one bag to every dad or future dad. So take, take them their Father's Day gift and say, Happy Father's Day, or Happy Future Father's Day. Give them a gift. All right, I think there are a couple of dads up in the upper theater. I think I've got one or two kids already up there. Okay, so kids, once every dad has got a bag, I want you back up here in the front. Back up in the front. Don't run, don't trip, don't fall. Okay. He is definitely a dad. All right. Did any dads not get, or any future dads not get their bag? Did everyone get? All right, so kids up here in the front, up in the front. Okay, so let's like say kids are, are a blessing from the Lord, are they not? Yeah. Let's give our kids a round of applause. <laughs> now, kids here in the front, I want you to turn around. I want you to bless the audience. So what you're going to do, kids, all you need to do is stretch out a hand. So I want you to pretend like you have the force. That's what you're going to pretend. Just put out a hand just like this. Just like this, put out a hand. So turn around and face, face them, not me, face them. Okay, so we're gonna pray that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what really matters so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Bless you and have a happy Father's Day. Give, give our kids a round of applause. And have a wonderful Sunday, guys.